In the realm of fantasy writing, it is vital to connect readers with the protagonist. Otherwise, readers are unlikely to care about whether that protagonist defeats the villain, confesses their love, or makes it out of battle alive. And flawed characters are indispensable. They breathe life into our narrative, allowing readers to embark on emotional journeys filled with triumph, failures, and personal growth. By embracing character flaws, we create relatable protagonists who mirror the complexities of the human condition. Every writer can improve their stories by keeping in mind the reader-character connection and strive to ensure that readers can sympathize with their characters. As writers, it's our job to craft fully realized characters, characters that feel as real as the people around us. Which means our characters should be flawed. A perfect hero might have its place in some mythology or fairy tale, but in general, a perfect hero is a boring one. And so, let us fearlessly delve into the realm of imperfections and craft characters that resonate with readers long after they turn the final page. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on writing character flaws. I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just, these are things that I learned that I think helped me, and I want to share them with you guys. So you can feel free to take my advice or leave it, but I do hope that this video helps you in some way. But real quick, maybe your brilliant mind is interested in learning some other skills. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. It has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced mathematics, AI, quantum computing, gravitational physics, and so much more. And there's new lessons added monthly. For me, I have never really been good at math. I partially blame my really boring math teacher, Mr. Davis. I'm sorry, but it's true. Uh, but scrap all the snooze fest lectures and the dull textbooks. Because Brilliant has these interactive lessons that make learning more like a game. You earn experience, uh, you can play like puzzles and quizzes, and it makes it so much more engaging that I actually forget that I'm studying. I always use the excuse that I don't have a lot of time, but Brilliant is basically made for busy people. It has bite-sized lessons that break down important concepts and make them understandable, so that you can gradually master a whole topic in as little as 15 minutes a day. And also, you can carry Brilliant with you anywhere. You can have it on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. So whether you're a math nerd, a science enthusiast, a coding wizard, or simply someone who wants to impress their friends with some fascinating knowledge, then Brilliant has some amazing courses that are going to make your brain do a little happy dance. And we like to happy dance. You can try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days by using the link in the description or going to brilliant.org slash captured in words. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. Anyway, a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. Now back to the video. Now, flaws are the building blocks of relatable and three-dimensional characters. A character who is too perfect, devoid of ever messing up or letting their emotions get the better of them, fails to connect with readers on a deeper level. Readers want to empathize with characters' struggles, root for their successes, and experience their growth. And it's through flaws that characters come alive, resonating with readers and evoking genuine emotional responses. Now, obviously, Obviously, this does depend on what type of reaction you want the readers to have with your characters. Maybe you want them to be disgusted in your character, to really just loathe them. But I mean, for the most part, you want your readers to empathize and have an emotional connection to your characters. I should probably note this isn't unique to just fantasy. I mean, you want to write flawed characters for any genre of fiction that you're writing. I'm specifically a fantasy writer, but these tips can be useful for whatever genre you're writing in. Now, with fantasy, maybe you have non-human characters. It doesn't matter. Even when writing about fantastical beings, you gotta ensure that readers genuinely connect with their stories. By infusing flaws into non-human characters, we humanize them, which allows readers to relate to their experiences, dilemmas, and aspirations. It transcends the boundary of species. Now, why do inexperienced authors often shy away from giving their characters flaws? The answer lies in fear. Crafting flawed villains might seem more acceptable because, you know, evil is allowed to mess up. However, when it comes to the protagonist, writers often hesitate. This is because they believe a flawed character might be more unlikable, which would then 
make the story less enjoyable. However, this is a big misconception that basically ignores the essence of crafting well-rounded and engaging characters. This is what I call the sympathy likability paradox. While writers strive to make their readers sympathize with their characters, they often mistake sympathy for likability, and the fear of creating unlikable characters leads some writers to make the protagonists practically perfect which ironically makes them less relatable and likable. A perfect character that can do no wrong and excels at everything they set their mind to is called a Mary Sue or Gary Stu character, and they're usually very boring. Now yes, it is the flaws and the imperfections that build the reader character connection, but they also play a pivotal role in crafting meaningful conflict within our stories. Flaws generate internal and external conflicts, driving the narrative forward and providing opportunities for growth and development. Characters' struggles against their own shortcomings, as well as their interactions with other flawed individuals, creates tension, adds depth, and keeps readers engaged. Let's take a look at some examples from Brandon Sanderson's best-selling Mistborn series. Vin, the central protagonist of Mistborn, grapples with trust issues and self-doubt stemming from her tumultuous past. She struggles to let others in and often questions her own worthiness. Vin's constant suspicion and reluctance to rely on others creates internal conflicts, hindering her relationships and personal growth. Her flaws make her journey relatable and her eventual triumphs all the more satisfying. Then we have Kelsier, the charismatic leader of the crew. He possesses an unyielding determination that borders on recklessness. His impulsive nature and stubbornness often puts himself and others at risk, and Kelsier's flaws drive the narrative forward, generating conflicts and highlighting the complex choices that he must make, and it's through his flaws that readers witness his transformation and the consequences of his actions. Another character, Ellen Venture, is a nobleman turned revolutionary who embodies idealism and naivety. He has lofty aspirations and a desire to bring about significant societal change. However, his naivety regarding the realities of politics and power often leads him to make misguided decisions. And Ellen's flaws serve as a catalyst for growth, forcing him to confront the harsh realities of the world that he seeks to change. And the last one I want to mention is Sazed, the knowledgeable and introspective terrorist man. He battles with self-doubt and an identity crisis. He questions his place in the world and grapples with his faith, constantly seeking answers to existential questions. Sazed's flaws lend depth to his character, allowing readers to explore themes of belief, purpose, and the struggles to find meaning in a chaotic world. Now there are two types of conflicts within a story. First there's the external conflict, the plot-driven conflict. Uh, for instance, bringing the ring to Mordor without dying, or surviving the Hunger Games without dying. Then there's the internal, character-driven conflict. Can Frodo resist the temptation of the ring long enough to destroy it? Can Katniss sacrifice her values in order to stay alive? Character flaws often manifest in the external conflicts our characters face. These conflicts arise from opposing forces, such as the antagonist, societal pressures, and challenging circumstances or just external events that push characters to confront their flaws. The external conflict acts as a catalyst for growth, forcing characters to face their own flaws head on. Internal conflict arises from the inherent struggles within a character's psyche. These conflicts explore the emotional and psychological turmoil experienced by characters as they grapple with their own imperfections. Character flaws can generate self-doubt, leading to internal conflicts rooted in insecurity, guilt, or feelings of inadequacy. Characters may question their own worthiness, or wrestle with conflicting desires, or battle their inner demons. Internal conflicts provides opportunities for introspection and character development as the character examines themselves and the, the consequences of their flaws. Character flaws can lead to moral dilemmas and ethical struggles within a character's conscience, conflicting values, temptations, or internal battles between right and wrong. Its internal 
conflicts that highlight the complexity of flawed characters and explore the choices they must make in order to face them. It's these internal conflicts that really highlight the complexity of a flawed character. The struggle between who a character is and who they aspire to be uh, can actually create a really engaging narrative where the reader gets to witness this transformation or evolution of character. Now to understand what type of flawed character you want to make, I think it's good to group flaws into three categories. There's minor, major, and tragic. Minor flaws usually don't impact the story in any meaningful way, they're simply used to distinguish the this character in the reader's mind. This could be a small quirk or habit like a character biting their nails when they're nervous or some small annoyance like being clumsy or forgetful or maybe it's a superficial trait, it's a flaw involving vanity, it could even be some sort of disability that the character struggles with that makes them insecure. A lot of the time writers might just use this type of flaw if they're worried about giving their characters any significant flaws. If you've ever read a novel about a clumsy girl who doesn't know she's beautiful, or a, a brooding, misunderstood hero, then you've stumbled across this kind of shallow character flaw. Usually this type of protagonist is very passive, however, one good way to use this type of flaw uh, is when crafting minor characters that don't, that don't really have a big significance to the plot. Okay, next we have major flaws. This is where things get exciting. These are significant character weaknesses that impact the character's relationships, choices, and the overall narrative. These are the flaws that often drive conflicts and character arcs. Some of these may include a lack of self-confidence or inability to trust others, or even self-destructive patterns such as addiction, recklessness, or uncontrollable anger. Major flaws can involve characters wrestling with ethical dilemmas, making more morally questionable choices, or harboring some deep-seated prejudice. Major flaws can create both types of conflict, and they're a great way to push a, a character down the road of transformation, and undergo a transformative journey. They often serve as the driving force behind the main central conflict of the story. And finally, we have tragic flaws. These are deeply ingrained and fatal flaws that ultimately lead to a character's downfall or tragic fate an Achilles heel. These flaws are often rooted in the character's personality or beliefs, and dr it's driving the tragic arc of the character. This can involve characters that have excessive pride, they have an inflated sense of self-importance that leads to their eventual downfall. Or maybe it's an obsessive pursuit of a goal, an uncontrollable desire, or an inability to let go of the past. Tragic flaws can also include characters being blinded to their own faults, refusing to acknowledge their mistakes, or the consequences of their actions. Moral blindness. Tragic flaws highlight how fragile human nature is. It demonstrates the destructive power of unchecked flaws. These contribute to the overall themes of tragedy and the inescapability of fate, leaving a lasting impact on both the character and the readers. Understanding the distinction between minor, major, and tragic flaws I think is really important to help you select and integrate these into your story so that you can create multi-dimensional characters that create internal and external conflict, driving the narrative and resonating with readers. A lot of the time, a character's major flaw will be a fear, false belief, or negative character trait like anger, insecurity, vanity, impulsiveness, cowardice. Uh, if you're worried readers won't find your characters likable, have no fear. Readers can forgive pretty much any major flaw as long as they can sympathize with the character. One of my favorite authors that does something incredible is Joe Abercrombie. In his first Law trilogy, he takes a group of morally gray characters who on the surface are very unlikable and would probably be the villain of any other story, and he makes us sympathize with them by providing the reader with a deep understanding of their flaws. Logan Ninefingers, also known as the Bloody Nine, is a conflicted and tormented barbarian. He battles an inner rage and a propensity for violence, often struggling to control his darker impulses. Logan's flaws adds a layer of complexity to his character as he seeks redemption while being haunted by the consequences of his violent actions. His constant struggle for control creates tension and conflict and drives his narrative arc forward. Sandan Glockta, a former war hero turned torturer, embodies cynicism and self-loathing. Physically and emotionally scarred, Glockta navigates a world of intrigue and betrayal with a cynical wit and a constant reminder of his own limitations. His flaws contribute to his jaded worldview and the relationships he has with others. 
Then we have Giselle Dan Luthar, a young and arrogant nobleman grappling with vanity and a lack of personal integrity. He's consumed by his desire for recognition and prestige, often neglecting the needs and struggles of those around him. Giselle's flaws expose the shallow nature of his character, and his journey involves confronting the consequences of his selfish actions, leading to potential growth and redemption. The first law books honestly have some of the best character work that I've read, and I think they're worth studying if you plan on writing some morally gray characters that readers can sympathize with. Okay, now it's time to go over seven steps that will help you develop genuine and impactful flaws for your story's characters. Begin by considering their journeys. Delve into the origins of your character's flaws. Explore their upbringing, experiences, traumas, or internal struggles that contribute to their imperfections. Understanding the root causes of their flaws will help you develop more authentic and nuanced characters. Connect the flaws to the character's goals. Flaws should intertwine with your character's goals and desires. Consider how their imperfections affect their pursuit of their objectives. Flaws can create internal conflicts, impede progress, or drive self-sabotage. Aligning flaws with character goals adds depth to their arcs and generates organic sources of conflict. Show flaws through actions and choices. Demonstrate your character's flaws through their actions and choices within the narrative. Allow their imperfections to drive their behavior and their decision making. This will provide tangible evidence of their flaws and provide opportunities for growth, conflict, and consequences. While flaws are vital for creating realistic characters, you want to balance those out with redeeming qualities. Give your characters virtues, strengths, or admirable traits that provide a counterbalance to their imperfections. This duality makes them more relatable, sympathetic, and multidimensional. If you are writing some characters, like from Joe Abercrombie's First Law series, you still want to give those morally and ambiguous characters some redeeming qualities. Well, you can do whatever you want, really, but that's my advice. Next, you want to explore the consequences. Consequences and flaws, they go together. Show how their flaws affect their relationships and their choices and the overall plot. Consequences can appear as internal turmoil, damaged connections, or external conflicts. And highlighting these repercussions of their flaws adds depth and realism to their journey. Flawed characters should have the potential for growth and redemption. Provide opportunities for them to confront and address their imperfections. Through self-reflection, self-awareness, or external influences, allow your characters to evolve and learn from their mistakes. This creates really satisfying character arcs that will resonate with your readers. One of my favorite redemption arcs is Dalinar in the Stormlight Archive. His entire redemption arc is kind of backwards. He's already starting to change, and then later on, you get his backstory and you discover how much of a monster he truly was. And then finally, if you can, try to steer away from stereotypical or cliche flaws. You don't want to just be creating a caricature or somebody who is just their flaw and nothing else. Challenge assumptions, subvert expectations, and surprise your readers with the depth of your flawed characters. Now, subverting expectations... Sometimes that's a difficult word to use because a lot of people overuse that word and they, they try to subvert expectations so often that that becomes an expectation. And in that way, subverting expectations can even become cliche itself. So I guess I'm trying to say, you need to be careful with how you handle subverting expectations. Again, I think Joe Abercrombie does this incredibly well. Crafting flawed characters is an art that requires attention to detail, empathy, and an understanding of human nature. By embracing realism, connecting flaws to character goals, and exploring their consequences, you can create compelling characters Characters that resonate with your readers. I really hope that this video helped you create some flawed characters that will add depth to your story. Uh, anyways, that is it for this video. I do want to make more writing videos. I'm starting this new series called Writing Craft. If you like what I'm doing and you want to find a way to support the channel even more, uh, then the best way to do that is to either become a channel member or drop a super chat in the comments, or you can join my Patreon. That helps out so, so much. I really appreciate the support. Uh, and yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time.